Today we're going to talk about the man often referred to as the godfather of the NBA, Pat Riley. Riley's been in the NBA world for nearly 60 years and has captured nine championships. But of those nine rings, one lies heaviest on his hands. It's not the 1972 championship he won as a key player for the Lakers alongside Jerry West and Wilt, which was the Lakers' first ring in Los Angeles and the championship that finally snapped Jerry West's 0-7 finals record. Nor is it the 1982 championship, Riley's first as a head coach, and as the architect of the Big Three Heat, those back-to-back -back championships in 2012 and 2013 were iconic. They rebounded from humiliation in 2011, silenced the haters, and pulled off one of the most improbable comebacks in NBA Finals history. But the Big Three's back-to-back -back rings sit below the Godfather's most coveted piece of NBA hardware the 2006 championship he won as head coach and president of the Miami Heat. This ring was the result of a game of chess at the highest level, a series of risky moves that many questioned. And to fully understand why the Godfather holds the 2006 ring so dear, we have to go back. In 1995, Riley became head coach and president of basketball operations for the Miami Heat just seven years after the team was birthed through expansion. And just a quick aside, but do you know the details of Riley's first contract with the Heat? Because that deal might have made him a billionaire. Before he joined the Heat, Riley was the coach of the New York Knicks for four seasons, winning at least 50 games each year and nearly capturing the 1994 title. But when it was time for a new contract, the Knicks played hardball and Riley directed his attention to Miami where Carnival Cruise tycoon Mickey Arison had just purchased the Heat. Riley compiled a four-page, 14-point memo listing his terms. For starters, he wanted 10 years, $50 million. At that time, no coach was making more than $3 million per year, and Riley wanted five. Bold. In addition to coaching duties, he would be named team president. Arison was to purchase Riley's LA and New York homes, arrange a limo service to and from games, and supply a credit card with a $300 per diem. But here's where it gets wild. Riley asked for a 10% ownership stake in the team and an additional 10% share paid over the course of his deal. He also wanted Arison to loan him money to pay taxes on that initial 10% stake. A wise man once told me, those who ask shall receive. And Arison might have been a little lightheaded looking at the price tag and baggage that his new coach and president would come with, but he agreed. Now, I'm not that good at math, which is why I'm making YouTube videos about basketball, but today the Heat are valued at roughly $4 billion. That means that if Riley owns 20% of the team, he's sitting on $800 million, not to mention all the money he's made in salary in his 30 years with the Heat. Not bad. And now that we're talking fun facts, did you know that Riley was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in the 11th round of the 1967 NFL Draft, despite not playing a down of college football? And how about one more for good measure? In 1961, Pat Riley's Linton High beat Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, back then known as Lou Alcindor, in a Christmas basketball tournament final. Who knew that those two guys would go on to win five championships together, and one of them would be a billionaire. Anyways, back to the mid-90s. With Riley at the helm and Tim Hardaway and Alonzo Mourning leading the way on the court, the Heat were consistently among the league's best. But they never could get past that guy named Mike from Chicago, or even Riley's former team, the Knicks. The Hardaway and Mourning era ended in the early 2000s with no hardware to show. A few years later, Riley stepped down as head coach after a putrid 25-win 2003 season. He handed over the coaching duties to his longtime assistant, Stan Van Gundy, but remained the president of basketball operations. With his full attention in the front office, Riley started pulling off a series of masterful moves. First, he snagged Dwayne Wade fifth overall in the 2003 draft. Thanks, Joe Dumars. Then he orchestrated the blockbuster Shaq trade in 2004, and a year later juiced up the supporting cast, bringing in Gary Payton, Antoine Walker, James Posey, and Jason Williams. But the new look he led by Van Gundy, stumbled out of the gate in the 2006 season. So what did Riley do? Like any good mob boss, he took matters into his own hands, calling Van Gundy into his office to let him know that his services were no longer needed and that he was gonna retake the position of head coach. And we all know what happens next. With Riley at the helm, the Heat finished the regular season with 52 wins, go through Chicago, New Jersey, and Detroit in the East playoffs, then overcome a 2-0 finals deficit against the Mavericks, 
and win their first championship in franchise history. So this is why 2006 is Pat Riley's favorite ring and also why he's easily on the Mount Rushmore of greatest coaches and executives in league history. We're going to be dropping a full episode with Antoine Walker, one of the guys that Riley brought on for that 2006 championship season. Probably going to drop that tomorrow. Once it's uploaded, I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you guys for watching, listening. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. So drop us a subscribe, a like. We really appreciate it. Thank you.